Hello, it's Alden, and here is a tutorial about getting a toon style animation in Blender. Doing toon style animations in Blender is an amazing thing to have in your pocket as a filmmaker or a freelance artist. I've done toon animations for music videos and client work as well as holograms. It's a lot of fun and it can all be done within Blender, so let's get started. This tutorial is split into three parts. This first part is about getting a tune style look in Blender and rendering out your different layers so that you can composite everything together in After Effects. Part two is about that compositing process. And part three is about adding a background and some final little tips and tricks about making your shot look like it was an animated shot. This is the final shot we're gonna be creating. So let's get started with part one. Also heads up, I screen recorded everything with a box for my webcam, but my webcam was turned off. So there's this black box throughout this tutorial. And anytime anything happens underneath this box that you need to see, I re-recorded it, but apologies for this being there. I went to Mixamo to get this animation uh, and this 3D character in this kind of like military exosuit, uh, just jumping and landing on the ground. First thing we're going to do is download that FBX file. And we see here it's about like 61 frames. I think I'm going to want to punch in a little longer. So first, um, I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to keep that cube because he jumped off something. But first, I'm going to line everything up. Um, so I might make him a little bit bigger. Um, so we're going to add a plane change here to random. And then we're going to reposition this cube so that he is jumping off of it. Let's like scale it that way. Add a new camera. And then I'm just going to open up a second window here and set it to camera view and then put my camera in place. Let's bring it back. Just trying to line it up a bit. Um, I turned the pass part two setting down to zero so I can't see anything outside of the camera view. Uh, that just makes sure that I can only see what's in the shot. Let's keyframe our position and rotation. Move forward to the jump. I want this to get kind of close to him. Cool badass hero shot. Something like that looks pretty cool. And then um, all of his animations kind of stop right here at 60, but I want it to go, let's say, 80. Frames, um, and to do that, I'm going to go into pose mode, select everything, and find you know. So here I'm just kind of spreading out these last keyframes to slow down that movement, just so there's you know a little something there. Um, and then as far as like the shot goes in that animation, I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, so now let's make this look like a tune. Um, to do this, we are going to stay in Eevee. Let's look at the rendered mode. Here we can look at materials. Um, and to start with, let's add a, add a light, just a point light. Um, let's move it here. So Eevee is, as you can see, um, you know, it creates some like relatively smooth fall off lighting here, but uh, to give this a tune look, we just want that um, line to be harsh. So it is, you know, either illuminated or not. Um, and let's say we also want to keep the texturing of this character as well. So let's go into the shader editor. Um, we're going to do some stuff with the material here. Just duplicate it and then make this one the tune. So um, out of Mixamo, we have, you know, a principled 
a BSDF shader that has a base color, a normal, um, and then also what's it got here? Specular or something? Um, we can definitely get rid of the specular and the normal. Um, and just delete those. This base color um, we can keep here, but in, let's delete this principled BSDF. So we're going to first start with an emission shader um, and bring in the color from that. Um, what this is going to do is basically this is uh, the texture lit up. So no light is going to affect that. So we're going to take this kind of base and then multiply it by um, a shadow. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take a diffuse shader, shader to RGB, and a color ramp. So this is going to take um, from turn our shader into RGB values so that we can then use this color ramp um, and then bring in that color there. So uh, if we change this to constant, that means depending on the light, this is either going to be black or white. So if we take this, also do a shader to RGB. By the way, if you um, just pull out from one of your nodes and let go, you can just start typing for the node you want. Now we're going to mix using just a mix color mix shader. Let's set it to multiply, and we are going to multiply this tune diffuse to the bottom one. And um, the factor here will be how much it's multiplied. So the multiply leaves the white values alone, uh, but multiplies the black value. So if we want it super dark and contrasty, we can do that. Uh, we can then go in and you know adjust the intensity there. And if you move this light around, suddenly we have something that looks like, um, is lit more like a tune. Uh, there's still some more steps we can take to really sell this effect though. Um, another tune thing that we can do is add some outlines. So we're gonna first choose the mesh and hit Alt-A to apply the scale, because we did scale it up. Um, and what we're going to do is add a new material here. We'll call this Tune Outline. Set it to Emission. Change the color to black. And check Backface Culling. You want this uh, on your mesh here, um, just down on the bottom, because then we're going to go to Add Modifier, Generate. Solidify um, that this submenu is in Blender 4. Um, it won't be there in uh, prior versions. Here in Solidify, we're going to, under Normals, choose Flip and High Quality. In Materials, this is offsetting the materials you have on that layer. If you just go to 99, it'll choose you know the bottom of that stack. So if you have a bunch of materials on your mesh, um, and then you just make sure that the tune outline's on the bottom, set that to like 99, this will work. And now if you um, kind of adjust the thickness here of this solidify, you will get some um, outlining either kind of like expanding out from the mesh or kind of contracting in. And depending on the type of mesh you have, um, different ones might be more effective. Um, so let's expand it out a little bit. And there we have some outlines on our character. You can also add a grease pencil um, as well. That tends to bog down my machine like crazy, especially if you have multiple objects in there that you need to um, use the get outlines for. This solution here is like super easy to use. And what's nice is like, it's not just the camera view. So any view, you can see this outline on this character. It will tend to kind of just favor the 
outside edges and some other things there. It doesn't get a lot of the contouring detail that grease pencil will, um, but it does a fairly good job. And if you want to add a grease pencil, um, I'll show you how to do that really quickly. And then I'll probably delete it just because it tends to bog stuff down. So you can add grease pencil and then let's do object line art. It has already chosen that mesh. Uh, so you might need to change the object here uh, and then let's adjust some settings. So thickness, let's bring it down to two. Um, and as you can see, this is kind of getting, actually, let me turn off the uh, solidify. So we're just seeing the grease pencil here. Um, this is getting a lot more contouring detail and fine detail than, um, than that solidify modifier did. Um, but as you can see, it's only from the camera view, which is fine. Um, but you're just not going to be able to reference it in anything other than the camera view. Um, and we can also go into this line art and make some adjustments here. Like if we don't want the contour um, or in various intersections, what is our crease threshold? But actually, in you know, this is Blender 4. It's slowing down our playback a bit, but it's actually not too terrible. So because um, you know we just have this one little mesh in the animation, I'm going to use this grease pencil just because I like kind of all of these other little details. And if I combine it with a solidify, um, I can get you know a really thicker outside edge as well as you know the fine details as well. That's kind of giving, you know, a little bit more like a Borderlands kind of style to it, but let's go with it for this tutorial. Um, we do see some stuff doubled up. So I'm just going to adjust the offset here in the Solidify modifier, just so that uh, it's not offsetting beyond where the grease pencil is. We have a little less of that. Let's go with it. We're also getting some shadows here. So um, if we choose our light. Right now it's making a shadow. If we turn this off, we're going to get no shadows from uh, the light at all. And we're only going to have, you know, shadows made from this material here. Um, and depending on your shot, you can kind of choose which one you want to do. This one will definitely give it sort of more of a tune style look. Uh, but sometimes adding shadows is kind of nice. So um, the shadow, especially on, you know, him landing. So we don't see much of it. We do see here um, shadow caused by his landing. Um, one thing you can do is turn on contact shadows, um, and that's going to add some more shadow detail in your model as well. Another thing here in your scene settings, uh, if you turn on ambient occlusion, that's just going to add some more shadows in some of the um, crevices. Screen space reflections we don't really need, but this depends on your style. Adding a little bloom, I think, is always nice. Um, but here in shadows, you're going to want to turn on high bit depth um, and turn these pretty high up. Uh, your playback speed is going to go real slow now, but um, this is just going to give you some really nice high quality shadows here. So one thing that this tune shader, some of the limitations are, there's no color to the light. So if I make this a red light, um, it's the color isn't actually affecting your mesh here at all. And that's because it's being created by just multiplying some dark shadow on the texture itself. Here's a note from Future Alden. So you actually can add color to the light here in Blender. Um, if you go into your shader here, instead of making this color ramp in your, you know, diffuse shader art to RGB color ramp node, 
if you do instead of white like red, um, this is going to give you a red light on your character. Um, but I guess what I was trying to articulate or the workflow that we're going to go through with the rest of the tutorial is keeping it white and keeping those renders separate because then we can have some control over um, exactly like we can change this color in the compositing process. Now, if you wanted to make this fully one color, um, what we could do is do another mix RGB. Um, let's do this color. We'll make it this red color. And then if we bring this into factor, switch that to black and white again. Um, then here we have um, this factor influencing, you know, turning all the illuminated areas of this character just as red color. And we could make this whatever color we wanted. Um, again, though, because this is, you know, the material is built in such a way, um, if we wanted, you know, one color light on one side and one on the other, we wouldn't be able to achieve that. Um, we'd still need to render out two separate passes for it. But if you are working on a scene that um, only has one light kind of like this, that can work. So if you do wanna add lights of a different color, um, essentially what you can do is set up your lights. I want this one to be blue. Um, let's go to this mesh and choose. So here's back to just that regular material. You know, let's say we want some red light and some blue light on the two different sides. What you can do is um, make separate render passes where you have a light turned off. So we're only getting that blue light and where it's going to hit and same with the red light. But instead of um, using this color texture, we're going to want to set it to white and probably turn this up to a factor of one uh, and turn off the bloom. So this is just going to give us, well, it's turning off the line art. So this is going to give us just a black and white version of um, where that light is going to be hitting, and then we're going to need to composite everything together. So while it is really cool uh, and really powerful to have some tune lighting and tune shading here in Blender and Eevee, to really add, um, to add different elements like different colored lighting, uh, it does take quite a few steps. So I am going to render out all of these passes just as PNG sequences. And I'm also going to keep the person and the floor and background separate. So make sure that, you know, the cube and the plane um, is not in the render. We're going to go down to film here and choose transparent. Oh, another thing, if you're using Tune uh, for your color management, um, if this is filmic in a version of Blender prior to Blender 4, or if it's AGX in Blender 4, just change it to standard. Um, and that's going to give us just true RGB colors, which is much more helpful here. As you can see, um, we actually get proper whites and blacks with um, standard. So I'm gonna render out those passes and then meet you in After Effects for how to composite them. So we're just going to render them out as PNG image sequences. So be sure to keep all of your renders and stuff organized because uh, there's going to be one PNG image per frame created with this process. Great job making it this far. Now let's take all those renders and meet me in part two. <laughs>